Hey everybody, it is Dawn with Crypt Monkey Studios. I am back for another amazing painting show and having so much fun with my little Celestial. She is gorgeous. She has so many tiny little details on her and I am so excited about this guy, this lady. Um, so this is another print from Mini Monster Mayhem. Um, we've got all their information up on the screen for you to be able to go and find them. Uh, I absolutely love his his prints. I think I've had one or two failed prints and those have been 100% on me for not cleaning out my vat or something like that. But other than, other than my mistakes, these things print out beautifully. I printed this one in my red resin just because I thought that would kind of do half my work for me on my painting job. But this is actually has a really cool story even to go with it. Uh, the Light Corrupt is about several creatures that have been corrupted by the tantalizing moon. And uh, most of them face trouble in believing they could rectify wrongs with some newfound power and lost their souls in the service to a dark entity. So all kind of fun stuff. Um, it's really got a lot of fun stuff. They've got uh, for the light corrupt Lee Stansberry actually partnered up with a few people and made some stat blocks for some of the creatures as well and all of these creatures are available on our Etsy to purchase the physical prints as well I uh, think I've covered everything for the basic beginning um, and thank you to my husband as well always for helping me as we're running everything here um, but I am pretty much ready to paint this one is actually gonna be a pretty paint a pretty simple paint job just because I printed her in the resin the red resin so really all I'm gonna be doing is getting some good um, shades going down in there to kind of deepen in the the crevices and the wings and then I'm going to be painting the spikes and things like that i'm going to be painting in a bra in my scorched metal um and then i will use the gold to actually dry brush over those to bring those up some more the lady herself is going to be done in ancient bark which is just a wonderful gray and then i will be uh dry brushing over her with a pearl white and then I've got a few different colors uh, just to play with uh, as far as the, because she's actually standing on a sun, so everything's kind of flamed. So I've got candlelight yellow, marigold yellow, and a dry citadel red that I can't pronounce the name of. Um, <laughs> so I'll use those basically all as dry brushes, and then I'll be using no oil for my, um, my shade. I do have... Uh, the sepia game ink as another shade that I might use as well and then I've got a few other of my colors set up off to the side for me to grab from in case I decide it needs something else like I've got a ruby red if I wanted to get some like kind of a glittery red uh, just to get a few more little highlights going I also have a yellow shade and an orange shade uh, and another sepia, different shade of sepia that I can grab from as well. So a couple of uh, other options, got my paint brushes, got my water, got my Q-tips, got my makeup brushes for my dry brushing. Uh, other than that, I think we're good to go. Again, I'm same as always, I'm holding it on a pill bottle that's just a cheap thing I bought from Amazon, but it just really works well. It's really comfortable in my hand. She's a little loose on here, so you'll probably see me holding her on pretty tight. But, uh, like I said, this is the option where she's on the sun. There's another option to print her where she's actually floating freely and the wings are the base. And that's it. And her feet just kind of dangle down, which is also another great option. But I just thought it'd be fun to paint the sun. So, this one we're definitely going to do in our hour and a half. I'm going to be so proud of myself if I can find this random hair. And let's get started. So I'm basically, I'm going to start off with the sun itself and get some of that null oil, which does so much of the work for me. It almost feels like cheating. 
This one I want to be pretty dark, so I don't think I'm going to water it down at all. Um, although I do think I am going to pour it out just because it doesn't want to behave and stay open for me. Which I probably will be using quite a bit of this shade. I used to have little eyedroppers that I would use to go in the Citadel shades and pour them out into my, um, my paint palette. So, I'm just going to layer in this ink, or I'm sorry, this shade, because I really want these pieces down here to go really dark, um, and then you'll be able to just, it'll naturally pop out those really high spots, and that's what I'll dry brush with the orange and the yellow and the... I guess technically it's two yellows and an orange. I typically, whenever I want to paint something that is red based, I very rarely use very many reds themselves. Uh, I just find that orange does a better, different shades of orange do a better red job for me than, than actual reds. A little too much there, but I'll just pull it to the back. I'm just going to be going in all of the low spots on this. I'm not even, see, I warned you. It doesn't want to stick to this very well. She does sit a little funny. Um, she doesn't quite sit, and that's not really fair because my thing is bowed up. She does sit a little bit off, but basically I had a lot of supports down here. So what I need to do is sand that flat and then she's gonna sit beautifully. I just didn't realize she wasn't sitting quite right until it was too close to time to stream for me to fix it for tonight. Uh, and you know, another, this is another one of his prints that I just, I don't feel like it needs a, a base. I thought about it for a while of what I might actually do for a base for this one. Um, I thought about taking a larger circle and doing, uh, painting it with like a celestial sort of thing. Um, just like a, almost a starry night and then from exactly where she would sit on it, coming out with like a really bright yellow burst. Um, because, I mean, she's fire, so the sun and the fire and everything... There's really no shady spots exactly with this one, which is kind of fun too. But anyway, I thought about doing, you know, kind of a stars just splattered around and then from her center spot coming out like a burst of yellow. I thought that might be fun. But I think what I'm going to do is that basic idea with the one where she doesn't have a sun. So it would really be like a pinpoint and then really coming out well from her feet basically would be the brightest point. Almost like she's shooting light out of her feet. Get her to stay on there for me. Man, I just, I love the details of this. It's like every time, every little stroke I make, I can see that the fire coming out of her wings. It's just awesome. And it even, from the sun, comes up around her feet and comes up around her hip and there's a little bit, a little touch right here. And I know it looks white right here, but it's not actually what it is, is it's such a thin layer of resin coming up around her like that. It just looks white next to everything else. A little bit much there, but it'll sink in. And I'll just pull it down. If I remember right, the, the evil entity that they, the, the corrupted ones followed was, a, um, oh, what was she? 
She was a powerful fiend, I know that, but she had like several names I'm trying to remember. Um, and while I'm thinking about that, I also want to point out with that we worked on our camera setup and I think these are much better shots so you can see a lot more detail of actually what I'm working on and doing. I think it works really well like this. Um, what was it? I know one of the names was the lighted one or and like I said, she, she had several names. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was a really cool little thing that they put together to go with this. Uh, and moving forward for his patrons, he will be doing that um, every month. He'll get together stat blocks for the, some of the creatures, and he'll put together... Uh, it, it's a PDF that's printable. Uh, but there's stat blocks, there's a little story... There's the adventure hook, uh, a lot of really great things you need to to run a one shot. I remember the first thing I read in in this PDF was that it was for level four or four level four adventurers, and the difficulty le level was hard to deadly. I'm like, well, it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, it. It's a really great, it's set up really great. Uh, there's images to go with it. There's, uh, I think I mentioned there's a map in there as well. I mean, it's just a basic floor plan map, but it's still really cool that it's in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I'm going to have to get a drink for a second. <clears throat> Since we changed all the cameras around, the where I had had my coffee setting earlier, or last week, it was not a space I could put my drink again, so now I have to reach across the camera to get everything. Which makes me feel a little silly. And I apologize. But I figure you'd rather me do that than cough in your ears. I'm just working my way around. Getting all these little crevices going. And I like the that the black looks, you know, that like that deepest part of the fire. And then when I come back and dry brush, I'll add a little bits of when I'm painting her gray after that, while I'm waiting for her to kind of dry up, I'll be dry brushing a little bit of the gray around in little bits around this too that'll make it look like ash as well. So it's just fun to play with those colors. And you can absolutely print it in any, uh, the gray resin or the the red, I mean, it really doesn't make a difference. I just, I love this red resin because it's going to leave a lot of clear spaces because uh, it is actually somewhat see-through. I mean, it's thicker in some spots than others, but that is to be expected. But it still is just really awesome effect to have that the wings kind of be not crystal clear but a little bit of a support left there not crystal clear but still clear and I won't put any of the this shade on her That is a little bit of a support too. That's one of the reasons I leave my tweezers around me. I'll just break these little pieces off. There we go. Got that out of the way. All right. 
I'm gonna, looks like my sun is kind of dried up. That is gonna be a pain all night long. The first layer on that is kind of dry. So add a little few more. I won't hit every spot because I don't want a uniform color. But I'll just kind of add some deepened areas here and there. Let me just set that off to the side for right now. And this is one of the reasons my hands get so dirty, but that's okay. It washes off. really get that bottom piece well too. All right. I'm pretty happy with where all of that is. So we're going to lay her down so she doesn't fall over on me again. <laughs> My brush cleaned up. I think what I'm going to do next is get her base coat on. Get a smaller brush for that because she is pretty small and detailed. And that's going to be the Ancient Bark. I probably don't need that much. That's okay. The only thing about getting my fingers dirty like that is I've got to make sure that I don't touch anything that's not supposed to have black on it. And I'm just rolling my brush and my paint so that I can keep that tip like that nice and neat. I have things attacking me, so I'm going to throw those out of the way for a minute. <clears throat> that is one thing that I like about having the uh, shades on things right away when I'm painting. Because it brings out those details and I know what I'm painting and where I'm painting uh, because other times it's just so difficult to tell well what is that right there exactly when it's all one big solid color Let's see she's got these little details of these swirls on her hip She's got a piece of fire coming up here, and then she's got those same swirls from her hip are on her breast as well. I think that's like a little faux bra sort of thing. I'm just going to get a nice, basically pretty thin coat, base coat. And see, I'm not even really trying to sink it into those grooves. And it's the same thing here. I won't try to sink into those grooves so that that red kind of still comes through. I think it just adds to it. Because like I said, those were white already, but it was just because the same thing right here. It looks whiter. But it's mainly because of the fact that the up here in her head is hollow. She doesn't actually have eyes. It goes straight from her... Um, cheekbones and you've got like a partial nose and then it just goes into this flame wave all the way back to her head or to the you know her into hair sorry so oh hi sorry I did I was so entranced in the the many I was looking at how are you doing thanks for joining us tonight I have a space over here where I can actually read text. I just have to remember to look over there every now and again. Good to hear it. So basically all I've done so far has gone around or I've gone around the mini with my shade. Uh, and now I'm just putting my gray onto the body her itself. So now you're all caught up. Oh, that is a question that would take up way more time than we have on this stream. <laughs> uh, typically, we, 
play D and D is the is the main thing, but we play board games. We play, you know, we role play with basically any system someone is willing to run. We're willing to play. Um, Ty, do you have a favorite? <laughs> it's, I think it's a, right now it's D and D. Yeah. Uh, no. What? Which alien? From the movies? No, I actually didn't even know they had a game. I love those movies. Oh, I didn't know. That's kind of awesome. I did absolutely did not know they made an RPG out of aliens. If I can get a better angle here, I keep taking this away from the center. Ooh, I am a big fan of dice, so any excuse I can find to need a new set of dice, I am good with that. <laughs> Alien would be a fun world to play. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear um, my husband, Tyler, but he was just saying that Alien would be a, a fun world to play in, and I definitely agree with that. It's like they have some stuff for pre-order right now. Oh, yeah? I always like pre-order because realistically it's, I order it and then I forget about it. So then it comes in the mail. I'm like, ooh, free presents. It's not free, but it feels that way. I don't play too many D6 based. Um, not because I have any preference one way or the other. It just seems like everything that we've been around is either you know, a full set or D20s or uh, like Retroscape is, seems heavily D20'd and D12s. Yeah. But. I'll tell you, she is sharp. She's like stabbing my thumbs with her wings. What do you normally play, Weary Warlord? <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. It's like, well, honestly, um, let's see. Oh, she got another swirl on her butt, too. Nice. <laughs> I think I prefer to be in now, Jace. I don't. I'm happy to play. I'm happy to play too, but I miss Ian. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm always happy that I live with a DM. Because that just makes my life simple. I found one foot. I'm trying to see if the other foot is in here. I think that's it right there. If it's not, I can fix it later. <laughs> it 
if no one around me was vaguely familiar with role playing, I think I would have to move. <laughs> Her hip is not easy to access, to be honest. Oh, there you go. My biggest problem was that my aura, our group was too far away. So my best friend moved in down the street, and then the other three just got a house that is. How far of a drive is it to their house now? 15. 15 20 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. So they were. <laughs> like an hour away which kind of made or an hour and a half away which kind of made late nights a little hard on them but now it's not nearly as bad I'm trying to make sure I don't get too much paint because her face is so tiny that I really just don't want it to sink in and just make her whole face one solid piece Not too concerned about hitting this ring around her throat because that'll be in that bronze color as well. <laughs> well, I think you are doing very well with your English. I mean, basically, once I've gotten her base coated like this with all this white, well, it's not white, I'm sorry, this gray, uh, at that point, we're really going to be on to pretty much dry brush. So it should kind of fly after that, at that point. Let's get these strands. Oh, well, that's not true. I've got to do the, the, the bronze before I can do that. You might hear my kid coming through with her, with their uh, phone playing, but pretty much wherever they go, they're listening to D&D &D podcasts, which I think that means we raised a good kid. Well, I, I am from America, and I don't think I ever got an A-plus in English, so I think you're doing better than I am. All right, I think I've got her base coated. Get that little spot right there. feels so weird to not have her on a stand, honestly. It's, I'm so used to painting them on something. I was the same way when I was painting Treebeard from uh, Reaper's Bones 4. He's so large that there's just nothing that you really can put on a stand. So I just had pieces of him everywhere, and it was just so awkward for me. Not awkward, I guess. It's it's more of just a... Was it normal, so... I think I, I got used to it fairly quickly, but... And this bronze is fairly thick, but I base it's going to be all of these little spikes that she has, so I don't think I need to thin it down, which is normally what I would do. And I still have some of the null oil sitting here so if I need to go back and deepen anything else I can do that fairly easily but a lot of these spikes are pretty small so <clears throat> I might get pretty quiet in the for the next few minutes so I do apologize but Feel free to ask any questions if you have any, and I will try to keep up with chat while I'm doing this. Ow. She is super spiky. 
And it's not just these, I mean, obviously these spikes are here, but even her wings have got just her daggers coming off of here. I know it looks a little dark, but uh, like I said, I'm going to be dry brushing this in gold, so it'll it'll pop off real well. But it's also the light corrupted, so it should be kind of dark. I'm sorry, what? I don't think we've printed any of those posters of the bird king because you see the chat messages. No. I am not sure what that is. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, the bird people. Okay. <laughs> I usually don't know the proper name for anything. Um, I just know my husband throws it out in front of me and then I'm supposed to kill it or heal people that are killing it. <laughs> There's like sitting on his desk is a monster manual and... For fear of character death, I have never touched that book. <laughs> I look yeah, at... The bird is real. It's a crazy looking bird. Yeah, I, I don't know names of things. That's one of the things uh, in the campaign where we're running right now where at the beginning of each session our dm will give us a chance to uh, talk about what happened last session and we'll get an inspiration point if we get an, an you know some things some details pulled out and i always make sure that i jot down a few names just so i can make sure i start the game with an inspiration point because if i don't write the name down i will never remember it ah But I will definitely be looking that up later because I am super curious of what it is. I won't look up the monster manual and the stats. I'll just look for the real bird. I'll leave the picture up. Weird. Okay. Oh, did you pull it up? Okay. I'm just tilting and trying to find any little metal spike that I see. I'll have to flip her over and get the, the back side as well. But I'll finish the front first. I don't think I'll be able to get to that one from this angle. Go ahead and hit her necklace piece too. think that's technically a necklace. I'm not sure what else to call it at the moment. So necklace it is. You would think that a mini this big and intricate would be 
something that would be really hard to paint and might intimidate people, but it really shouldn't. I mean, especially printed in this red like this, it's just super fast. I mean, realistically, you could just do, you know, a, a wash over the whole thing and, and call her good to go on the table. One of my favorite things about this one. Yeah, neck halo, that works. Thank you. <laughs> because that's really what it looks like is a neck halo. Um, I forgot what I was saying because <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Nope, I have no idea. I'm sure it wasn't important anyway. Well, we don't know. Maybe that's the way halos are always supposed to be worn. But, you know, then again, that's kind of the story behind these is they're corrupted. So maybe it is a fallen down halo. A little bit there I don't want. Get my little trusty Q-tip. And wash it right off. <laughs> of course it's defective they're always defective as soon as I touch things they break I don't know can you turn a halo off and on again is that a thing if you have a clapper <laughs> gotta have the clapper first Uh, keeps dropping like a corona mask. Uh. I had hurt my wrist uh, way back toward the beginning of the outbreak. And I had to go to the doctor's office and they had uh, signs everywhere in the doctor's office with a person with a mask like this. And then a person with a mask like this, and they had a check mark above one and an X across the other. <laughs> like, I don't think you can make it more simple than that. All right, I think that's the front of all the spikies that have been stabbed. Nope, there's one right there. And there's one right there. <laughs> yeah well I mean and some masks don't even have the wire so I'm lucky kind of lucky in that that I have glasses so I just would use my glasses to kind of pinch it onto my nose I also make masks so I made one that fit me perfectly a little bit of cheating there too but that's what sewing machines are for right Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Thank you. What is that? Hick BP? <laughs> Am I saying that right? <laughs> Well, Warlord, you can actually get uh, dress adjustable straps as well, so that really helps. Because <laughs> I, when I looked at it at first, I wanted to say hiccup, but that's definitely not hiccup. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm just going to say brandy because that's so much easier for me to say. Brandy is one of, well, she's one of the most important players in our D&D &D group.
because she is our healer. And she also has great taste in masks, I'm just saying. <laughs> get in the back of some of these spikes. Some of the back of these guys won't be able to be, won't be visible, so I'm not terribly concerned. If I can't reach them, then you can't see the back anyway. And because the resin is a little bit on the clear side, even the ones that I haven't, I can see the back of it, which is, it's hard to get on the angle here. I can see the back of this one, I can reach it, but I already see the paint from the front too. So it, it's already darkened it just from having the front painted, which is nice. All right, I think that's all my spikies. And my neck halo. Nope, one more spike right there. Tip. So, I do believe we are on the dry brushing stage, which is exciting because that is gonna go so quick and make this look so amazing. Now oh, I do have a little paint right there I wanna take off. Kind of surprised that Mark and Scott aren't painting along with me. Oh. I wasn't looking at the gamer chat, so I didn't know Mark was driving home right now. Oh, well, then I... <laughs> Dies over here feeding me information. All right, let me get my dry brushes out, which my wonderful best friend gave me makeup brushes because they work so much better as dry brushes than any paintbrush I have ever gotten. And I think I'm gonna start with my orange, which is the marigold yellow. I keep calling orange, it does look orange to me, but. Scott, sorry. I only half listened to him, so I misheard him. Let's see, now I've got paint on my finger that I don't want to, I want to make sure I don't get anywhere that I don't intend to, so excuse me, reaching around to get a clean paper towel and get that off my finger. Normally I wouldn't be concerned with it, but because I'm holding her rather than having her on a stand because she wanted to misbehave. So I'm just going to lightly brush. Um, I'm really just barely kissing it uh, because I don't want it to be heavily orange or any one solid color. And I really don't want anything to be uniform in the color at all. <laughs> yes, I figured you would have already had her painted if by now. So for the planet, I dry brushed up. Uh, so the sun, sorry, not planet. Uh, I dry brushed up. And for the wings, I will dry brush following the flow of that, uh, that particular piece. but trying not to get my bronze pieces. That's an annoying little noise, sorry. <laughs> my palette's running all over the place. Now 
actually just before we started to stream my timer went off for the resin printer is finished again um, and I have some more of the light corrupted or I'm sorry light corrupt minis printed uh, I'm trying to get one whole full set of these done before we go to our first convention this year oh which is get the hair out of the way daikon wore my daikon shirt because we're um, 11 days away from that one and it's in Collinsville Illinois hey I remember the town this time really don't know how I forgot that last time so excited to actually have conventions again hitting a few spots a little harder than others just because I want those to be brighter Hey Brandy, will you guys be at uh, at Archon again this year? That's a little too heavy right there. Just using my Q-tip to kind of wash away some of those spots that I didn't mean to hit as hard. That's good. I always love when you guys come by the booth. You guys have like the most amazing costumes. Dang it. I don't see much of there again. Let me get my brush cleaned off a little here. see mark was an orc i don't remember for sure all i remember is you were the tower and you looked phenomenal i i just could not believe that thing it was it was just amazing but he wasn't an orc what are they the called the ones with the the white hand print they're not orcs in lord of the rings Urukai. Urukai, that's what they're called couldn't remember what that was that's what he was wasn't it And I, I'm completely blanking on Scott's. <laughs> well, I've seen a bunch of your costumes, and I think you'll come up with whatever you end up with. It's going to be amazing. I've been working on a steampunk costume that basically is ready to go, except I need to embroider the shirt that I'm going to wear. I'm going to embroider gears all over it and uh, clockwork sort of things. A little fat brush in there. All right, Hit a couple more spots with this color, and then I'll switch over. switch over to the I'm not even going to bother cleaning my brush because I want all of these colors to just kind of flow so I'm going to switch over to the the dry red and because it's a dry and it's so citadel I'm just going to use a little stick to put some in my palette because I don't want to work from the little thing Beating off my brush. I'm 
can see I just letting it kind of like I said do its own little thing blending the colors because that's what fire does you know and I will finish this whole thing with a gloss I may do her matte and the rest gloss but I haven't made up my mind yet on that kind of going with the flow <laughs> this coming from the Ursula costume lady give me a break That thing was like just outstanding. I mean, you dressed yourself up as one of the towers from Lord of the Rings. Come on. I'm stitching a few gears on a shirt. Give me a break, weirdo. Of course, all the co or you know all the costumes that I wear and everything. It's just for me behind the booth. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even participate in any of the contests. Usually, don't have time to go out there and do it. She's kind of bouncing around in my hands, and I think that's probably making it not fun for you guys to watch that, and I apologize. back and get a little bit more yellow come over. and again I'm not even bothering to clean my brush because it's okay if these colors blend that's a little too much thank you just got told I'm at my 30 minute warning which I actually think we're going to be fine Man, that's, I have a new favorite spot right there. It's like the magic of dry brushing. Like all I'm doing is throwing colors at it and it's just all these little grooves that he did all that work. My uh, mini monster mayhem, you know, did all this work to do this wonderful sculpt and it's just literally dry brushing it and it's making it just Freaking phenomenal. Purposely took a little bit of my orange and a little bit of my uh, yellow here and I'm just kind of dabbing it on my brush. Get those couple of bases that are just really lit up. And I still have my brightest yellow that I haven't even gotten out yet. So I will be doing that in a few spaces. But just putting that Knoll oil around this sun is making it to where all of these flames popping off of it is just awesome. All right, I am going to put that dry brush in the water, and I'm going to get a smaller one. Use this one for... Uh, dry brushing her and get out a different palette so I don't get my colors mixed up because I don't want the yellows and all of those bright beautiful wonderful colors but I don't want them on her so I'll use this palette to get because you know if you haven't noticed I'm slightly a messy painter um, this is that pearl white so it has its own little sheen to it um no actually that's not a dumb question at all that's actually a really good question brandy 
Again, I'm going to call you Brandy because otherwise I'm going to call you Hiccup when I look at that. <laughs> um, so, no, as, as far as the difference between painting resin versus a plastic model versus a metal model, there's definitely different um, preps that need to happen. So that's, that's the main big difference. Um, like a Reaper plastic model, you're not really going to get away with uh, without um, priming it. A lot of their models have a tendency to, it has a film on it. So it, you either need to wash it really good in soap and water and get that film off, and then you can paint without um, priming. Uh, or it's, you know, wash it really good with soap and water and then, you know, prime it as well. Um, and then metal minis, you absolutely have to prime. You just can't skip that step because you'll get a beautiful coat going. You'll get these, all these wonderful colors happening and you have this versus that and it's just this amazing coverage. And then, you know, six months down the line, you're like, oh look, what's this little flake? And you peel off the entire paint job. I've done that. It's not really fun. Um, so that's definitely something you want to look out for. As far as the resin prints, I typically base coat um, or, you know, prime my miniatures. But like this one, I didn't. And you can see I've had no trouble with any paint sticking to her at all or sticking to anything on here at all. So that to me is the main difference. Um, another difference is that, see, I can talk about this for half an hour. So that was a really good question. Um, another really big difference is the Reaper minis. Specifically, you can take a lot of WizKids ones too. You can take them and boil them in water and they will get pliable and you can mold them into, like you can even take like dragon wings and can construct them in a, in a different stance that you want with limitations, but you can make the mini look different than what it actually was. Um, and then with, uh, you just boil them in, in water for a minute or two and then put them in the position you want and then dunk them in ice water. Usually you have to hold them down in that ice water, which really it's a bucket of ice with some liquid in it, <laughs> which hurts like hell, like you could imagine because it's ice water. Um, and then they'll hold that shape. So that's really cool. Metal minis are another one that you, you definitely can make those adjustments. You have to be a little more careful that you don't, because it's pewter, it's, it's pretty easy to move around. You just don't want to snap pieces off. Um, that's not the case with resin. I, I've never tried boiling it to maneuver it in any kind of way that I might want. Uh, but it's, it's not something that you can really, these pieces are not exactly, f they're not fragile, but they're not pliable either. If I, you know, it, it moves back and forth, but if I move it much for more than what I just did, it'll snap off. So the resin is, is much more fragile than the plastic miniatures or the, um, pewter miniatures. More brittle, yes. Thank you. Brittle is the word I was looking for and struggling to find. Okay, I'm going to leave her alone with that shine for now. And I'm going to go to dry brushing the gold. Uh, I'm not really going to clean my brush because I want that gold to be brighter. So I actually might mix in some of this white in the first place. And, or the, not white. I'm, I keep calling it white, but it's um, pearl white. It actually, I don't know if I can catch it on camera, but it actually has a, a pearlesque look to it. Um, that shimmer that pearls have. So Reaper did really well with that set of paints. All right, we're going to get on that neck halo first. And this one, I didn't really wipe my brush off because I kind of want it to be really shiny right there. So it's not really dry brushing on that piece, but now it is. 
have like two of these set up. I've got to go fairly light on this just because of if I press too hard, I'll go down onto the, the wings instead of staying on top of these pieces like I should. But as far as the rest of the difference, um, once I've got that base coat on or primer coat, no, there's, there's not really anything I do different after that. Once you're, once you're primed, it doesn't really matter what you're, once you've got your stance, you've got everything set up the way you want it and you're primed, you're, you're good to go if, as, as far as that goes. I think like this piece in particular, she has a lot of sharp bits. So I'm dry brushing a little lighter than I would, but that's not because it's resin. It's because of the model in particular. I think more than the, what the model is made up of, I think the model itself would dictate changes in my painting technique versus anything else. More so than anything else is what I meant to say. I'm sorry. I'm doing detailed parts, so I keep distracting myself on what I'm tr from versus what I'm trying to say and what I'm doing and everything else. I'm not one of those people who can type while they talk. I have to do one or the other. Because if I'm talking while I'm typing, I just start typing what I'm saying out loud. Little tiny details, every which way. I love this sculpt so much. This is one of the other things that I really enjoy about being um, a patron of his is even during the month while we've, you know, we're working on printing all of the things and playing with all the toys that he gave us last month. He's constantly giving updates on, you know, what he's sculpting and giving, you know, uh, in-process shots and everything else. He's, he's very active um, on his Patreon. My mini, yeah. My mini, no, mini monster mayhem. Good, I kept trying to say my mini factory is what I was doing. Ah, uh, so it's, uh, I can't say it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ty's going to put the credit screen up so you can see his name properly. Not why, I, not how I'm saying it, but mini monster mayhem. Mini monster mayhem. Um, no, he does a really good job. I mean, these, these are phenomenal. They're fun to paint. I am a little afraid of when these guys come out of the display case. I really don't want to fight these, um, but they're a lot of fun to paint, a lot of fun to print. Uh, but it's definitely everything that he sculpts, you can tell is his style, but there's still a very wide variety that we get. Um, this one is the, the light corrupted was the theme. Um, so, you know, everything is dark and twisted and just awesome. And then this month or this month's release, 
that we got at the beginning of the month was aspects of Terra. So it's everything, you know, elementals and genies and everything is, is in the kind of nature realm. Um, and then this month that he's working on is all, uh, I forget what the name of it is, but it's like all dinosaurs. There's a, <laughs> there's a Severus T-Rex. Yeah, I didn't misspeak. There's a three-headed T-Rex coming our way. Something from Jurassic Park. <laughs> um, oh, life will find a way. That's, That's what it is. That's what it. Thank you. That reminded me. Life will find a way. So yes, we'll have. We'll be having a three-headed T Rex. We're gonna die. It's not good. All right. So now I am done with the gold. So I am going to get out my brightest yellow and put it in the palette that I shouldn't have put it in. But hey, that's okay. And we're going to dry brush some areas of the mini where I want it really bright. And I'm still hitting it really lightly. I mean, the, the brush stroke itself is super, super soft. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell exactly, but I'm barely even blend it, uh, bending the the bristles of the brush itself. Um, Cause I don't, I really don't want to sink into any of those grooves at all. Which I mean, realistically speaking, I can always come back on, on top and go um, and add a little bit of the no oil back on that spot to bring it back down again, which I have done before. I've spent, you know, just time after time going, you know, okay, dry brush, now uh, now go in with the, the shade and then come back over and dry brush again and shade and dry brush and, and just build it up slowly and it, it really turns out phenomenally. Oh, she is sharp. And the thing that's really going to make this sing is when I'm done with all of this, putting that clear, um, the gloss coat over the top is just going to make all of this fire look alive. I mean, you could even take this and put some blue um, dry brushes in as well to really get that, that deep fire look. But I think I'm going to stick with my yellows and oranges and reds. Well, I don't actually have any red, sorry. So I think I am going to put, I don't know, she just seems like she's missing something. I haven't decided what I need to do to fix that, but she feels like she's missing something to me right now. I'm going to get a really fine brush to get in here without hitting her again. I won't exactly dry brush that part. Because I want this to be brighter. <clears throat> She just still looks a little flat. I might just go over with another thing of, of white to really make her glisten, but I haven't decided. I'll figure that out in a minute. It's one of the things I like about dry brushing is I can kind of just keep working on the thing that I know is working and figure out what I need to fix or how I'm going to fix it. This is a flame over here on her, so I'm going to bring that really bright yellow because it'll tone down in a few minutes as it dries. But 
bring it down into that orange that we've got nice showing over there. Get that one right there too. Get a better point on my brush here. Just by twisting it in the palette itself. Hear the birds chirping outside. Sounds like it's sitting right on the windowsill. I'm pretty happy with that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get let this guy soak. Go ahead and get my gloss coat on the fiery bits while I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with her. And this will go on fairly um, opaque. It'll clear up. Com it, it dries completely crystal clear. It's the, ow, I just hit the camera, sorry, uh, Vallejo gloss varnish. I do like that it goes on opaque because that means I can really tell where I've hit and where I haven't. Because I do have a tendency to be interrupted when I'm painting. Um, having to get something for the dogs or one of the kids or, or anything like that. So it's pretty nice that I can see it fairly clearly. definitely missing my coffee right now. I should have made myself a cup before I started. I'm not trying to be super accurate with this. I'm just trying to get a good, nice, thick, well, not thick, but, you know, just a nice, good coat on there. I will definitely have to get more on. not put enough of that on there. Oh, put it over here. <laughs> One of these bottles, I mean, I'm just about out on this bottle, but I don't even remember when I bought this bottle. I, they last for a long time. Just a lot of area to cover on this particular mini. I think, oops, sorry. I think what she's missing is just that definition that I, I want to see so much of the rest of this has so much definition and then she's just bland at this point she just looks white to me so i might take a thin down coat of my sepia uh, what's the word shade my sepia shade and <clears throat> put that over her so that I get that you know those swirls are defined better and things like that and then I'll come back and dry brush her again with white to bring that highlight way back up again I think that's what I'm not liking so far about her this is definitely not the sculpt that I don't like that is freaking amazing the sculpt actually has holes where you see that red still coming through it's legitimate holes in the model itself 
which is just phenomenally done. Wipe my fingers off again. Now I'm going to hold her so I can get everything else. How are we looking on time? Eight minutes is not going to do it. We do not have friends straight the time, though. Ah. We might go over a little bit just to finish it up because it, there's only a few steps left. Next week, I will not be able to go over because we have friends starting their stream at 8 o'clock. So we'll want to jump over and watch theirs. But I mean, considering the size of this model, it's not bad an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to have her fully painted. It's not bad at all. I've had minis this size that have taken me a week to get done because I just can't get it all done in one setting. out of that gloss but I do have another bottle I just have to take it out but I don't think I'll need it for this one because like I said I don't think I want to make her gloss anyway and just kind of go around <clears throat> and see these thicker spots that have kind of pooled just kind of wipe those away especially in between these golden spikes and things like that. Oh, speaking of which, I need to get her neck piece, neck halo, because that is definitely supposed to be shiny and metallic. Just kind of twisting and turning and seeing like the pieces that are coming up her leg I need to get now. I want those shiny as well. I think that's going to be it for the gloss. So now I'm in the spot. There we go. She can lay down there for a second while I get my sepia out. And I'm definitely going to water. Actually, I think I might. I'm going to use my orange instead. And it's just a, a Citadel orange shade. Go really carefully and get these in the spots where I, I want it, and that's it. You see, they has got these wonderful swirls that just lost all their definition. Just putting a drop of water and a drop of uh, shade to get it kind of thinned out a little bit more. using my q-tip to kind of pull it away from those higher spots that I don't really want it. It's 
funny how it just looks so messy now to me. <laughs> but I'll clean it up when I get the the white on there. When I get it in that small of her back. And then on the the pieces that are see-through, I want to actually get that thicker. Yeah, so she does look a mess now, but we'll clean it up. Back to my pearl white. get my shade closed and off before I knock it over. Like I can't even count how many times I've lost like almost a bottle of shade from knocking it over. Now I'm just going back with the white and hitting, being very selective of areas that I'm highlighting before I do the dry brush. And that's how I kind of clean up those areas that have a little bit too much shade. Straight on the right spot. <laughs> See if I can get just her cheek there. Coming down the bridge of her nose and on her chin. And I always love those lines in the neck. I love it when they do that. I always try to make sure I get those good and highlighted. The dry brushing will take care of bringing the swirls back out. And see, like up in this area, I won't really be able to dry brush because if I try to dry brush that area, I'll just hit everything, even with a smaller dry brush. I know me. So I'll come in and do just details. I find that doing things like this with the side of a brush is a lot more useful than trying to use the tip of the brush. Especially when like trying to get these swirls if you weren't just dry brushing the whole thing. Get your put this over here so I can show you. Getting it spinning it to get it a nice point, making sure you don't have too much, and then just using the side of your brush to kind of really, really lightly come over those areas. will hit those higher spots and it's selective dry brushing, if you will. 
He's a little fuzzy on her. But in the beginning, I used to, you know, try to get in with my the tip of my brush and get those areas, and it, it was just so impossible. And I could see people getting these amazingly thin lines. I'm like, how are they doing that? And then I watched uh, Michael Mordor painting, and he just turned his brush to the side. I'm like, you know, kind of face palm like moments. Like, why didn't I think of that? All right, I think I'm gonna really get the, the regular dry brush out now. But I'm gonna use that one that I use. I knew I had a little itty bitty baby one. Sometimes, especially when I'm doing white, I can't tell if it's doing anything on the paper towel, so I use my thumb. Also, don't over, you know, there's a lot of times where paint just has to be built up. So that's <clears throat> one of those things where it'll, it'll, uh, I'll dry brush an area and I'm like, it didn't do anything. And then I come back over it you know, three or four layers and realize it was doing something the whole time. It just had to be built up. And then I'll dry brush that. I want her stomach right here to be really white. And this is one of those colors that just has to build up and build up, so. It's funny because it, it's a pearl white and it is almost iridescent. I mean, it is iridescent, but it's almost clear when you put it on thinly. I think those lines... that I might actually call that done. And the gloss still has to dry a little bit but you can see so like on the sun part down here you can see where it's really getting shiny. Oh I need to go way down. Is that better? Right there? <laughs> Sorry. Um, try to get it in frame there, but in the sun part, you can see that it's really kind of getting pretty shiny. Um, the other areas are getting really shiny and it looks really good. Um, my dog's barking too, but no, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to call her done and ready to do battle. Any last questions before we let you guys run away from us? All right, well, I think we're going to say goodnight then. Uh, don't forget to follow us. Thank you. Uh, on Twitch, uh, we have Twitter. We're going to put up a screen where we have all of our little bits and bobs. And our Etsy shop, you can search Crip Monkey Games on Etsy. And you can find all of our beautiful masks that Brandy was talking about. <laughs> Uh, as well as these miniatures. Um, so like, subscribe, do all the things that we love you guys for. And we will see you next time. <laughs>